So the thing is that we are not just interested in that problem. We are interested in this problem, in a new activity. So what's this? Okay, so our company has been sold those two products for many, many days. But now today, the company has an option of producing and selling the third product. Okay, so it's natural. Uh, you used to sell two kinds of things in your retail stores. And someday your father, mother, your investor suggest you that, hey, why don't you sell the other thing? So you are making that consideration. Okay, your product line is expanded so that you may think about how to allocate your two resources to now three different activities, different products. Okay, so one unit of product three requires only one unit of resources two and that can be sold at eight dollars so your new linear programming formulation becomes this one okay the resource limitation is still there uh, you now have a new activity production quantity should be non-negative the pr price for each unit of product three is eight dollars seems to be very attractive and you may also see that oh well the resource consumption of product three is really small so intuitively, we should try to sell some units of X3, but how many? We want to know what's the optimal decision to make for product three, or what's the optimal production plan for product three. And if we want to make a decision on that, we certainly need to take X1 and X2 also into consideration. Well, may we find an optimal plan? Of course we can, because this is just another linear program. So let's do it. Well, this is now our new linear programming iteration. So this is our initial tableau. This guy shows up and then we do pivoting. Do it once and then another pivoting. Do it twice. And then it also makes sense to increase your X3 because X3 is so beneficial. So you do that again. Well, you again do this uh, ratio test. This one enters. And then you do one more iteration and finally you get to your final results okay here you can see that your optimal solution is that you should spend everything you have on product three and then you are able to produce six units of product three and eventually earn 48 dollars this must be an optimal plan for you to do there's no reason to consider product one and product two because you have already used the simplex to solve an optimal solution, to solve the problem and get an optimal solution. That's good, but well, may we do better? The thing is that, do we really need to solve the new problem from scratch? Let's think about that thing. We just solved a problem with n activities, which means two activities in our example one. And then we get a new problem with n plus one activities three activities. The original activities remain unchanged. The resources also remain unchanged. The new problem is so similar to the original problem, right? So somehow it seems to be make sense that maybe we may go from an optimal solution of the original problem and then we do a few iterations to get to the end. Maybe that's possible. Maybe we don't need to go from the very beginning, right? If you take a look at our previous iterations, then you may see more concretely why this may help. When we add the third activity, the others are just the same. So when you enter X1, basically those things I circled is just the same as what we have here in your second tableau when you don't have product three right and then after you enter x2 you get to here and here those things that i just circled is also the same as your optimal tableau when you have do not have product three so basically what we're doing is that since that there is really no reason to do the previous two iterations seems that we should start somewhat somehow start from our third tableau or somehow start from our optimal tableau from our original problem 
The original problem is so similar to our new problem, right? We should somehow utilize what we just did from the original problem. We should go from the optimal solution from the original problem. So may we do that? The answer is definitely yes. When our decision variable set changes from x1 and x2 to one additional variable, x1, x2, and x3, our initial solution or the optimal solution for the previous problem is certainly feasible for our new problem because we simply just don't produce anything for part three, right? As our initial solution. So it makes sense to start from this initial solution and check whether it is optimal to produce some units of product 3. If we shouldn't do that, this is actually optimal. Otherwise, if we should do that, we are just increasing the non-basic variable x3 until one basic variable becomes zero. Well, that's something very typical in simplex method, right? All we need to do is to check the reduced cost for x3 and then we will be able to decide whether we should do this or do that and then we may move on so if you look back to the iterations here basically if we start from here all we need to do is to check the reduced cost for x3 and because this is negative 7 so good that's why we do it over everything afterwards the only thing remains is just that even if we get the idea, we need to somehow have a systematic way to calculate, to calculate this particular number, the reduced cost for our new activity. So we're going to see how to do this.